Why do some games hook players into coming back day after day, season after season, while other games are dead days after release? My name is TJ, I'm trying to complete a Horde survival roguelike game in one month and I want to give it replayability. There's a reason gaming companies are now hiring full-time psychologists to keep players playing, so how can we add this to our little game? So we are on week two now of the month long challenge and before we make the game replayable we need to at least complete a few more mechanics so let's add a feature to the gun so that instead of firing endlessly it will hold a limited amount of bullets in its magazine. When that number hits zero it'll pause firing to reload. To display this to the player we're going to add an orange bar underneath the health bar and I pretty much immediately changed that though because I felt like it was clogging up the UI a little bit too much so I moved it down to the bottom of the screen. I'm not the biggest fan of the UI right now but we are pressed for time. My day right now consists of work, gym, get home, then to get into the cyberpunk mood I'll throw on some Doom or Synthwave stuff and hop into game dev for a few hours, listen to too much moody music and then suddenly question if there's a point to anything at all, work on a little more game dev and then sleep. Now we don't want to add any mechanics that cause the player to feel like they're not in control. You should be able to reload whenever you want and fire or not whenever you want. So instead of a forced reload time, we're going to give the player the option to fire manually. These modes can be toggled back and forth from one to the other whenever you want. And there's two icons, one to display manual and the other to display the auto mode. When in manual firing mode, instead of the bullets flying out until you need to reload, they only fire out when you click the mouse button. In either mode, you can hit R whenever to reload. Next, we're going to need some icons for our gun, so I'm going to pull some code out of an old project that allows us to take screenshots in Unity of all of our weapons, and then save those screenshots into sprites. I'll link the script down below in the description, so feel free to reuse it in your own projects. Also, I added a bit of UI on the bottom of the screen. As you can see, it will display what weapon the player has equipped. So today began with a specific goal in mind, adding replayability and a sense of progression. Now, excluding linear story games, almost every game has some form of player progression, whether that is better gear in an RPG or unlocking higher level buildings in a city building game. These are rewards given to the player for completing the main gameplay loop. Now, like I said earlier, for some games this hooks the player and other times it just doesn't. Why is this? In my opinion, it is entirely dependent on the ability of the game to show the player that the reward was worth the grind. Does the progression allow the player to feel more powerful than they were when they started? So to do this in our small little game, we're going to be adding meta progression that is impactful enough to increase your survivability. So at the end of each round, we are going to give the player some credits. The amount we give will be dependent on how long the player has survived. So these credits can be spent on items that will give the player a permanent stat increase. These are things like reload speed, health regen, movement speed, just little bonuses that may seem small on the surface but add up. So maybe at the beginning of the game, uh, you're starting out and you only survive three to five minutes before you're overtaken by the horde. Then with a little bit of meta progression, you get to seven minutes. Then a little more meta progression, taking you up to 10 minutes. This incremental increase should give the player immediate feedback that they can feel stronger as they grind it. So you'll earn credits to spend on upgrades, which will allow you to survive for longer, allowing you to earn more credits, allowing you to purchase more expensive upgrades that will allow you to survive for longer, and the cycle continues. All of this is coded to save the data in a local JSON file, so each time you play, your progress will be saved. And I don't include much code in these videos, but if you'd like me to do that in the future, let me know down below. Now, we're also going to throw one of the guns in here and add some nice animations to have it rotate back and forth, and if time allows, I'd also like to add meta progression not just to the player, but to the player's guns as well. Also, here's a little tip for anyone using a pack off the asset store that comes with an emission map for your materials. If you just uh, pull it into Photoshop, select all the emission tiles, replace them with white, then export it back as a PNG, when you mess around with the color of the emission map, it will do the emission thing in whatever color you'd like. Now, I don't want guns to be the only weapon on the player. I'm going to add swords as well for all of you degen weeaboos. Okay, honestly, swords do fit the cyberpunk theme pretty well. Thank you, weebs, for being a punching bag. Now, first I'm going to install an animation pack. Need to shout out the homie. Get this pack yourself. Then we're going to add animation events to open and close a collider on the sword. If you want to see a more detailed breakdown on how I set these up for fighting, I did a video on bar fights in Tavern Team. Go check that out. But long story short, it opens a collider on the sword, then closes it at the end of the swing. If that collider passes through an enemy, the enemy takes damage. I then add some particles to the sword. I'll admit, it's kind of mid. I'd love to make this really detailed and really polish the graphics here, but we're pressed for time already, so it's good enough for now. 
day 12, we hopped back into the actual gameplay. Now, if you remember from last week, rolling makes you invulnerable, so to prevent it from being endlessly spammed, I added a limit to the amount of times the player can roll. These roll charges are spent so that when you roll, uh, it will regenerate slowly over time, and we can even increase the amount of charges that the player has through upgrades that you select on level up, and also from meta progression. Now, we need to add some differentiating factors to the guns. If they all feel the same, that will suck. So let's see how it feels to add some variance to the bullets. I added a variable that picks a random value in a range, and that value is how off the mark the bullet will be. So how wide the angle is going to depend on the accuracy of the gun. So, you know, something high precision will shoot far and accurately. Something low precision will just spray bullets haphazardly all around you. I'm a little worried that this is going to be too frustrating for the player, so not 100% sure that we're going to keep it, but I guess we will have to playtest to see how it feels. And speaking of playtesting, uh, join the Discord, link down below. I'll be running a playtest there for anyone that wants to uh, get a jump on it early. Day 13. So remember those icons I generated of all the guns? Uh, I wound up throwing that out. What I'm actually going to do for the cards is load the models of the guns, because um, it looks better, and slap a little spinning animation on them. This is done by putting a render texture in the UI and having a camera off screen where the rendered gun uh, is, can be seen by the camera. So for three different cards, we've got three different cameras looking at three different guns. Now let's go over a few of the weapons we have here. The gun that won the West is going to be a slower firing, heavy hitting gun that does quite a bit of damage. The assault rifle will also hit decently hard and is mildly accurate at longer ranges. Precision rifles are very accurate at longer ranges, may be optimal for fighting against bosses or whatever, but the idea with multiple gun slots is that the player may want to grab a few different weapons and switch to the optimal one for the situation. And I set up two different swords, uh, right now one is pink and one is green. I have no idea how we're going to differentiate these two, but I want them to feel different, somehow. There's also going to be an SMG that's just going to be spraying bullets like a garden hose, um, <laughs> Good luck hitting anything far away with it though. Next, I'm going to add some special abilities for the player, like the Sandevastan from Cyberpunk. But if you want to see that, you're going to have to subscribe to see next week's episode. Love you guys.